So let me be honest with you all. I haven't used Way of the Wraith Hunter since Forsaken, and I was only really using PvP where it stood the bestest of chance. But as Void 3.0 is coming, I want to look back at the subclass and see if we could possibly make it viable for endgame in any sort of way. Now, don't give me that look, as it's been a long time coming for this specific subclass, and now is a great time to explore what its capabilities could be, once we get more abilities options come Witch Queen. And you know what? I found a way to make the subclass viable, and it involves a lot of abusing your invisibility via Graviton's forfeit, and then applying a sweet 30% debuff every time we stay invisible. It sounds mental, and trust me it is, but the application of it makes it somewhat more viable for solo content of your choosing, and if Void 3.0 update goes as planned, then this could revive said subclass. But you know what else we should get ready for? A sponsor. AOL.com offers discounted silver for Destiny 2 users and players alike. Use my code to get 3% off. And if that doesn't help, then do leave a like or sub for more content like this in the future, because I really do appreciate it. So the subclass will be the Way of the Wraith, and my plan is to utilize this invisibility as much as I can so we can get our mini back faster, and then use said mini to apply a debuff on the targets while the flawless execution ability is propped. The following subclass is well known for its use in PvP because of its war hacks and strong invisibility skill for solo players, but we never hear much about the subclass when using PvE content, and that's because of the super itself which weighs it down. Compared to Top Tree and Bottom Tree Void, Middle Tree Void Super is one of the weakest supers to use in PvE content, and requires a number of hits to take out in minor to major combatants. This isn't an issue in PvP, but PvE it really does make a difference between you using a super at all, or better off saving it. However, the lack of strength in the super is made up by its abilities it comes with, and these abilities are great for those solo players who wish to cheese through content without much hassle involved. Activating Flawless Execution, every time we get a Precision Kill we can go invisible for 7 seconds and this will refresh each time we land another Precision Kill. Upon that, we can then get a Shattering Strike ability going which allows us to apply a weakening effect on combatants via midi hits, and this is a whopping 30% which can be applied to multiple targets as long as we have the Flawless Execution on an active. As a Flawless Execution is connected to our Invisibility Timer, I had a wild idea. Why don't I use Graviton Forfeit to extend this timer for longer while also gaining back mini energy faster? Doing so pushes my invisible timer from 7 seconds to 15 seconds, and thus I can use my smoke bombs more often. With that, I then left my mini stats at around 80 as elemental worlds were fitting in the rest for the build, and then I added in at least 60 to mobility so I can combine that with Gambler's Dodge when I decide to use it, and thus provide me with near infinite smoke bombs while I'm invisible and debuffs, of course. As shown, it comes out very powerful for the user, as you only need to proc it 1 to 2 times via precision hits to activate your invisibility and generally go from there. The only downtime for the build is when your midi and mobility stat are refreshing, but except from that you can go invisible as many times as you like. And yes, I am aware of the new aspect called Stylus Executor, and this is actually the reason why I wanted to look into the subclass, as the aspect pretty much sounds like an upgraded version of Flawless Executioner. For weapons though, we are pretty much in a good spot as you're free to use any precision based weapon of your choice. For example, I have the Whispering Slab with Demolitionist and Firmly Planted, which all fits hand in hand with the subclass traits and function. Although we can easily get a better bow than this, this is a relatively good bow to use if you don't have anything else priming wise to use. Plus, there are a ton of other bows that fit the build just fine. Alternatively, the Messenger Pulse Rifle is a great weapon to also pick since it requires around 1-2 to two bursts to take out the majority of combatants. The thing about the Pulse is that it comes with a huge amount of perks that are beneficial for PvE, such as Rapid Hit, Frenzy, Desperado, Heating Up, etc and you're very likely to get one of these perks if you have ever played Trials before. The only issue here being that you have to play Trials and at least unlock it first before you can get a random roll, but any precision based weapons are fine for you to use, so don't fret. For secondary, we have the Lovence Driver, as I haven't seen many people use this in PvE content since its release. To be very honest with you, the weapon is just as strong as it is in PvP, while in PvE, as getting a precision kill is so easy to nab. Not only is it a functioning headshot machine, but its effects of pulling in combatants for even more damage is very useful in crowded areas, and needing to take them out in one giant go. 
Now, Chuck on the particle deconstruction mod and going against champions not only becomes fun, but also incredibly broken when you realize how much of a perfect match it is with military void. It's like watching two lovebirds finally take flight. What a perfect happy ending, huh guys? Anyways, Heavy will be the threaded needle in the fusion with Clam Cartridge and Frenzy since we are still sticking with the precision frame weaponry. A machine gun is also good to use but I ideally try and stick with a high impact frame as they fire slow and are easier to maintain over how much ammo you can easily reserve. For stats, focus as much points into your mobility and strength as these two will be playing the biggest part in the game. Mobility at 60 plus is ideal if you want to make sure you get your mini ability back at full via the gambler's dodge ability. While that is linked into the build, this will also link into the Reaping Wallmaker mod, a mod that is hands down the best ability mod for those that use their class ability a lot. If you have a high mobility stat for the hunter for example, and you use your dodge ability as well, then this mod will make sure that you get a guaranteed elemental well after using your dodging. Compared to elemental armaments, which we are using of course, this mod will give you a well as long as you net a kill, as simple as that. Now if you want to make it interesting, you could add in the powerful well mod, explosive wellmaker mod, a weapon such as Telesto, and the reaping wellmaker mod in one go, to get around 5-6 to six wells in one go. Although, going this method means you'll be missing out on key mods such as protective light. Now speaking of the mod, protective light will also be used in the build with the element of charge mod by side. With this safe setup, you can create worlds and be protected all in one while not needing to rely on the charge with light method instead. The strength stats should be placed at 80 to 100, so you can use your smoke bombs to slow and damage combatants over time while also placing a debuff on them. However, this isn't a always guaranteed thing to be applied via the smoke, and it's probably better in this case just to use your melee up front. If you do, then reduce the stat down to 50 to 60, and then place the rest of the stats into mobility or recovery. This should be easy to do if you have the Radiant Light mod as that would give you a plus 20 in strength alone. Leftover wise, we are then left with Linear Fusion and Refinder, Hands On which can be switched out for Ashes to Assets, Elemental Armaments for creating wells via Void Weapons, Invigoration which will reduce melee cooldown even more, a Fusion Scavenger and Particle Deconstruction which can be and will be taken out come Witch Queen. Now with everything covered, here's what it looks like compiled. For head we have strength, hands on, the near fusion and refinder, an elemental charge mod. Arm we have mobility, fastball, an elemental armament mod. Chest we have strength, concussive dampener, sniper resist, and protective light mod. Leg we have discipline, fusion scavenger, invigoration, and radiant light mod. Cloak we have my resilience, particle deconstruction, and reaping wallmaker mod. Now we have already covered a build before with Governor Forfeit and this is still one of the best builds to use if you ever want to do Master to Grandmaster content safely. However, when it comes to trying something else out, the following build we have now is something worth playing into and messing around to see just how effective it is in endgame. A lot of the builds you see with Hunter Voids or either top tree or bottom tree and it's easy to see why. As mentioned before, middle tree suffers with a relatively weak super that is okay against minor combatants but anything more than that and the super requires more hits to finish which means more super energy goes to waste. The super is perfect for PvP as that's what it's designed the best in and even using the super to revive your allies alone is pretty handy when you need it the most but except from that, this is where the super for the subclass ends. Hopefully it will receive a buff in some way or form as it really needs it badly. The subclass abilities though are very strong and this is where I want to lean the most into. Flawless Execution, Shattering Strike and Corrosive Smoke are all fantastic for solo players or solo DPS as they all back up each other one way or another. Going Invisible will allow us to debuff a combatant with ease while gaining many energy back. By the time our invisibility is gone, we get our smokes back and can repeat the process as many times as you like, rinse and repeat. What I find interesting with this setup is that all of this is on demand and doesn't require you to have a max stat to really benefit from it, or need to rely on a specific weapon or gear to get the best of it. You just need to make sure you fill in one requirement and you're pretty much set from there. And this is why I hope Void 3.0 does some justice for the hunters as they have a lot of utility designed around for solo or group content in mind, but the supers aren't as hard hitting compared to most other subclasses available. 
I would hope Spectral Blades get a PvE buff to make them hit a bit harder, or something, just so they don't get left behind. If that's too much, then at least a fragment or aspect that enhances the class abilities would really go a long way. But anyways, this is a great build to try for endgame if you solely use its abilities alone, but Superb is a hit and miss. I wanted to explore how viable such a build is and there is hope for it if you like to get active of course. Hopefully we can expand on this area further down the line and really see the build shine, as both top and palm tree void are dominating the hunter subclass of choice. Let's try and mix things up for once. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on twitter to keep up to date with destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.